Hey everybody, this is Kelsey Dion from the Arcane Library, and today I want to talk about the two characters I made for my solo gameplay efforts. So for those of you who followed the Shadow Dark Kickstarter, um, I had a stretch goal on there where I was going to try running Shadow Dark RPG using the Mythic GM emulator, and we hit that stretch goal, so I'm going to be making three gameplay episodes. But first we have a little bit of setup to do. So I made two characters. I wanted to start off with two. I feel like that leaves us room to maybe grow the party size if we want, but it doesn't have us stuck with just one character from the start. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna do is, up here I'm gonna be running a video of the stats that I rolled. Um, I just did 3d6 down the line for each character, and I actually rolled a pretty good stats for both characters, which is very unlike me. Normally I roll really badly, so I thought it was kind of funny that I got two pretty decent characters from the start, and I think that it might help me get my feet on the ground doing solo gameplay stuff and maybe give me a little bit more wiggle room for mistakes and problems since I'll only have two characters to start off with. So my first character turned out to be a dwarven priest named Torsen. I, I rolled dwarf and uh, the name randomly, but I chose priest because he had a really solid set of stats that really spoke to the priest class. He has a 14 strength, 14 dexterity, 8 constitution, 10 intelligence, 16 wisdom, and 14 charisma. He also has 7 hit points, which is pretty good for a starting character. And interestingly, when I was rolling up his background and his deity, I got an acolyte background, which seems fitting for a priest, but I think when you get something like that alongside a class that really speaks to that background, it might mean that this character has an even greater level of knowledge than normal. So I think that Torsen is an acolyte, or was an acolyte of maybe some other gods, or has learned a bunch of other rites and rituals for other deities on top of his priestly knowledge. And it turns out he's a neutral priest of Or, the god of magic. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I wouldn't have normally chosen that for a dwarf priest, so I really like that the dice gave me that. And it makes me think that he's really interested in magic in general. I chose some spells for Torsen, including Cure Wounds and Shield of Faith to help him out a little bit in combat, because as a starting character, he didn't have a lot of gold, so all he could afford was his weapon and some leather armor and a few pieces of adventuring gear. And the last thing I did for Torsen was use the Mythic GM emulator tables to roll up a motivation for him, because I wanted an idea of why he got into adventuring and what he might be after. So I used the random meaning tables just to generate a two-word prompt that gave me a really interesting idea. I rolled the words block and illness, which made me think immediately that Torsen might be out to prevent or stop some kind of illness that's plaguing people or society. So I wonder if because Torsen is a priest of Ord that he thinks maybe there is some magical spell or item that might allow him to block or end an illness. And so that is going to factor strongly into his primary reasons for becoming an adventurer. All right, now the next character I rolled was a human witch, it turned out, because her highest stat was charisma, and I thought it would be kind of fun to make a spellcasting foil to Torsen. So we've actually got two spellcasting classes for our main characters in this. She again got pretty solid stats, so she has an 11 strength, 13 dexterity, 14 constitution, and she has a 12 for both intelligence and wisdom, and after her talent rolls, she came out with an 18 charisma, which is like as high as it can go. Now I rolled her background on the diabolical background tables from Curse Scroll 1, which is where the witch class is from, and she got chosen, which means that some entity or being or deity has taken an interest in her, and I'm really interested to see how that plays out in the game, and that might even be one of her starting threads or story arcs that we try to find more information about as we play. The other thing I rolled for her was a random deity, and she happened to get Shun the Vile, who was the goddess of witches and dark magic, so I thought that was pretty fitting. But Shun the Vile is a chaotic deity, and I rolled randomly for Liana's alignment just to see if I might get an interesting result, and I did get neutral, so because Liana's a witch, her alignment doesn't necessarily have to match her deity in the way that a priest does. So I thought neutral was an interesting result there, and it makes me think that she maybe leans more into the magic interest side of Shun, um, rather than the other dark magic and dark secret side. Which makes her a pretty interesting match for Torsen in the adventuring party. They both seem to have a strong interest in magic. Liana rolled an extra spell for her other first level talent, being a human, so she has a pretty cool set of spells. She has Eye Bite, Fog, Hypnotize, and Willow Man, which are a mixture of defensive and offensive spells. Now the last thing is that 
Leanna gets a familiar, like a little animal friend and creature that can speak common because she's a witch. So I turned to the Mythic GM emulator to help me generate an idea of what this common little animal might be. I got the word pairing inspect plot. And I really had to think about that one for a minute, but eventually my mind turned to the Disney movie Cinderella um, because it made me think of the little mice that live in the house that were helping Cinderella. And you know, they would run around and spy on the stepsisters and learn the plots of the evil, evil stepmother. And so I thought, well then I think that she has a mouse. And it even rolled a random name for the mouse. We got the name Rosalyn. So that is Leanna's mouse familiar. And finally, I rolled a motivation for Liana as well using the word pairings in the Mythic GM emulator, and I got inquire location. So that made me think that she is looking for the location of something important, which kind of makes sense when pairing up with Torsen as an adventuring party, because maybe she's trying to help him find whatever this cure or spell or item is that can block the illness that is plaguing society. All right, so with my characters made and a little bit of information about them, I also wanted to roll up a little bit of starting information for them that we're gonna be using in our next video. So I wanna find out a little bit about where they are and what they're currently doing as we open up our little campaign with them. I'm gonna be turning to the fate chart in the Mythic Gym emulator, and this is gonna be a way that I can ask the system yes or no questions and get some answers. Now, with this system, we start off with something called the chaos factor, which when it's higher, actually increases the chance of unexpected expected or yes outcomes. But when we're first starting out, it's at a five, which is very middle of the road. So I'm gonna be rolling percentile based questions and then referencing that against a cast factor of five. And that will let me know whether or not something is a yes or a no. So my first question for the Oracle is, are Liana and Torsen currently in civilization? For that, I'm gonna roll a D100 and we'll see what we get. Now I'm placing the odds here at 50-50 because Mythic asks you to choose how likely you think something is. And the fact is, I don't know how likely it is that they'd be in civilization or not. So with an even odd, it means that we just rolled a 32 and we got an answer of no when we cross reference that with the chaos factor. So no, Leanna and Torsten are not currently in civilization. Now my immediate next thought is, can we get an idea of where they are? And so for that, I wanna actually roll on the meanings chart using the locations options, and that might generate an idea for us. So for this, we're again gonna need a D100. So I got an 86, which is storage, and 15, which is colorless. Colorless storage, so that makes me think of perhaps an abandoned keep because the walls are sort of gray stone, which are kind of colorless. And storage is a place where someone might put their resources. And so I think that they're currently hiding out in a castle keep maybe um, that's been abandoned or maybe not. Let's ask the Mythic GM emulator, is this an abandoned castle keep? I'm gonna say the chances for this are probably likely given that civilization appears to be having some struggles right now due to this illness that Torsen is trying to block. So we're rolling a D100. So I got a 98 and interestingly, that puts us into the range of results that means an extreme yes. So not only is this place abandoned, it's probably been abandoned for so, so long that it's crumbling and overgrown and we don't even know what might be in here because it's been the, in this state for ages. Now knowing that, we need to ask one more question. Is there another creature or being in this place? I'm going to put this at a flat 50-50 because it may or may not have resources or things inside of it that would attract other creatures. And it seems like we're talking about a pretty remote setting. So I think the odds are pretty even. So the result of 35 means no, there's nothing in here for now. All right, so we know where our two characters are starting off. And I think that sets the stage for our next video where we're going to begin our first scene and we're gonna see if it plays out the way we expect it to and what adventures Torsen and Leanna get themselves into. So thanks so much for watching this and stay tuned for the next solo gameplay episode as we really dive deeply into the gameplay. Thanks very much for watching you all and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.